language, the differences that you have with your partner. Mm -hmm. And there's a, there's a beautiful thing in, in the beginning of Genesis. So the, the phrase that's used when uh, it talks about even and Adam is is before. So it's it's really fascinating. I mean, the whole thing is really beautifully symbolic. The that Eve never receives a name until after they're kicked out of the Garden of Eden. She she's she's called just the woman. Bro, I'm literally horny already, dude. Nothing gets me going like Bible study. Nothing gets me going like Bible study. Nothing gets me geared up like learning about relationships, like hearing from the Bible, okay? The most true thing that anyone has ever read, okay? Jesus makes my pussy so wet. You have no idea, okay? Uh, actually, mm, hypothetically, Adam and Eve or the archetype for the original relationship. Um, that's why, um, hypothetically, uh, my wife was made from my ribcage. Until that point, and then he names her, right? He, he hmm. first names her and he says- R slash atheist is on? Fuck you mean, dude? If you're talking about interpersonal relationships and you go back to the fucking Bible, then yeah, I'm gonna make fun of that. That's not R slash atheism. Ja, right, which is a derivative of Ish, which is the same word, just add a hey at the end, um, because that's how he sees her. She's a derivative of him. She's, she's just an object for him to use. Oh my God. Wait, I was just joking. He's literally doing that. Oh my God. Oh my God. I was just joking. Oh my God. I literally made that up as a joke. I was like, no one is stupid enough to make that argument, right? And he literally just said that. What the fuck? That is absolutely insane that is an insane fucking place to go uh and that's why she ends up talking to the snake because if you if you're seen as an object by somebody why would you want to talk with them you're not an independent human being and it's only and that's after... why you don't want to dance with someone who only has sexual gratification on it, their mind. It, exactly and and then she she sends they're kicked out and then he renames her eve right adam calls her eve okay so hold she's on. the mother so, of all so the, the first of name all this is given by who adam adam yeah uh, uh, so he he names he's naming all the animals yeah, right? yeah. and then it says that and that's given no, them a reality a semantic reality right and then he and then god says none of these partners are and adam can't find a partner right they're not suitable and he says so i'm going to give you a help you need a woman not a right. dog not right. a pet dog exactly he says you need a help me but the yeah. phrase that's used is azer connecto so it's, it's translated help me yeah what it actually means is a helper against you Oh, that's that's what it actually means in Hebrew. Azer connecto, right? So, so there's an adversarial element in there. Yeah, because what 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 you know what that's makes... right. That's why I always said women are the dragon of chaos. Women be shopping, am I right, Ben? These women, there's an adversarial nature to the relationship. That's why us boys, we must stick together. Us men. Liberate your sh uh, you liberate yourselves as men from the shackles of oppression. Stop hanging out with women. Stop it. There's, there's a better person idea is the adversarial called, element. There's yeah. this idea in neurophysiology called opponent processing. It's really cool. So if you want to move your hand really smoothly this way, mm -hmm. you can do it like that. But it's nowhere near as smooth as if you do this. You can be absolutely precise. So you really tense this hand against this mm -hmm. hand and mm -hmm. then... This one relents a little bit. It's absolute precision. And so that adversarial process, you imagine that women and men are slightly different temperamentally or even quite a bit different. Well, you're trying to hit the mark, but the mark moves. And so how do you hit it? Well, you hit it with this adversarial process. And you do that with kids. When, and when you're negotiating in the house too, it's like, well, you think this and I think this. And, and that's why when you fundamentally refuse to acknowledge the difference between the sexes, you lose the Azer connecto. I don't understand. So like, so like LGBT relationships are out, by the way. You know what I mean? Like, just, uh, boys, sorry. I was just kidding. A relationship with another man, with a man. Well, there's no adversary, uh, <laughs> there's no adversarial nature there. And therefore, it's not smooth. Part of that, you lose that, that opposition that that's, that's yeah. necessary. That's also, a, see, my wife has a more masculine temperament than me, and she's really low in politeness, which is an aspect of agreeableness. And it makes her quite formidable as a combatant. And sometimes uh, in our life, she's, she'll say things that are so out. Wait, oh my God. I'm learning so much about the way Jordan Peterson is right now. There's, a, there's just a multitude of self-reports uh, being unlocked.
in the JP lore currently. Outrageous that, well, it usually makes me laugh. It's like in an intense fight, she'll say like three of the worst insults you could possibly imagine, and it'll make me laugh. And it's, it's hard sometimes to deal with her because of this more aggressive element. But it was also something that really attracted me towards her because she's no pushover. And she's got this like, she's got a kind of a knife-like sense of humor that mm -hmm. comes out quite often. And so I really like the combative element to it. And that's part of what keeps a relationship dynamically alive. So that's very cool. So that's the first name. So, the, so he, he first calls her Isha and says, because God's going to give her his Azer Connecto. And then after the whole element with the with And he snake, called, okay, so God's... Bro, I'm sorry. But if you watch this, you're never getting pussy, okay? If you're a dude and you're like, on oh God, I am so fucking horny. Like, I am down bad. I'm down abysmal. I'm down cataclysmically. I need to fucking learn about how to get bitches, okay? If that's your if that's your attitude and you watch this video, you are literally never and you deserve to never get laid, okay? Straight up. Like can you imagine being like I need please. These two are my favorite thinkers. They're my favorite intellectuals, my favorite critical thinkers of all time, and they're going to give me the best relationship advice that I've ever heard, okay? 34,000 people. No, we're not talking about us. We're joking about this. We're making jokes about this. I'm talking about people in all sincerity that clicked on this video, okay? The 1 million people since December 18th when this video first came out. The 44,000 people that actually like this, okay? Like, it, it's not even entertaining. That's the worst part about it. It's not even fucking entertaining. Like, I'd rather watch them, like, queuing on psychos, you know? Uh, talk about shit says he's going to he's going to deliver this what's the word is there is there connecto right so it's a helpmate right in, but it's in, an adversarial your adversarial part yeah the word connecto literally means against him right wow, it's going to be is so there cool. a helper against him right okay and connecto. then then adam, and then adam names calls her, her isha right because says she's she's flesh of my flesh she's bone of people my people who need relationship advice are losers no you probably need relationship advice everyone at some point needs relationship advice it's just who you are going to for this like Here's some relationship advice. Practice empathy, okay? Respect your partner. Listen to their, uh, listen to the desires that they're communicating, okay? That's relationship advice. Oh, uh, well, uh, on the Nebuchadnezzar, there was Adam and then there was Eve. And Eve's original name actually means uh, dragon of chaos. Like, this is fucking, this sucks bone which is how a man sees a woman when the woman is just an object to him, right, right? right because right. she's mine right it's my possessiveness of her that defines her as a human being and the, and the word woman just like in english is a derivative of the word man right yeah, it's, it's yeah. ish which is spelled aleph yud shin it's the same spelling you just add a hey at the end and now it's isha right so she's going to be called woman because i'm called man so she's you know she's a secondary she's derivative a secondary of me. derivative of me right, right which is how a man would understand a woman it's like she's like me except smaller right exactly right. and and then once she starts to what? bear children then she's the, he calls her chava right eve the mother which is this the same root is, of of life and chava right chai is this is the same root so it's uh is means that the etymologically of... related to the word for chaos do you know uh, in Hebrew? In Hebrew? Yeah. Uh, like at the... The formless chaos at the beginning of time. Is there a relationship between that and Eve? Thank you, Asan Game, for the five of the subs. I don't think so. I'd have to, I'd have to check it. I'd have to check it. Um, but the... What the, are they he's... doing? They're fucking Bible nerds, dude. They're literally talking about... They're just nerds, dude. They're literally... It's like having a conversation with your fucking Magic the Gathering homies about how, like, you know, in order to get laid, I need to, you know... Uh, I need to unlock land cards, okay? Like five land cards or whatever the fuck you say in Magic the Gathering, I'm forgetting, but it's like... It's like turning it into fucking... Turning it into what they do know, okay? And what they do know is just being a fucking nerd about the Bible and about the Torah. He says she's the mother of all living, and then that's how she's defined. What, what gives her a meaning is the thing that that actually does give women meaning i know i got a lot of magic the gathering fans right, i know is is the ability to bear children which is of course what we as a society have decided to deride and pretend is not a superpower and mm. and and treat as a secondary aspect of femininity when it is in fact the primary aspect of, mm. of femininity and so mm. it's it's really it, it's quite fascinating and, and it's really, that's why i like beauty and the beast you know because 
I taught a lot about hero mythology to mm -hmm. my students, and the women would sometimes come up and say, well, what about the female hero? Does this motherfucker still teach? I don't think so, right? So I thought, well, that's complicated, because you have the image of Mary, and that's pretty maternal, but in Christianity, Christ is also the redeemer of women, and that's mm -hmm. an adventurous hero in some sense. It's like so the female situation is complicated, right? Because there is this adventurous spirit, but it has to be combined with this maternal fecundity, let's say, and, mm -hmm. and involuntarily. Well, what I really liked about Beauty and the Beast, and I do think that's the best Disney movie ever made, was that it's a real female hero myth. I mean, the woman, Beauty, is beautiful, so she's high up in the female dominance hierarchy, but she's witty and well-read and intelligent and adventurous. Yeah, Beauty and the Beast is the, Beast is a perfect female myth because it's a beautiful woman, important, very important, okay? Because women have to be objects of desire first and foremost, and that needs to be their most important quality. And then secondly, the second most important quality of a woman is like how they can tame a man, right? With their feminine aspect. Totally normal stuff, by the way. I mean, straight up. Isn't that nice, dude? And brave and courageous and truthful, mm -hmm. all of that. And she doesn't fall for Gaston, the psychopathic persona. And young women are much more likely to fall for men like that, by the way, than, than women who are slightly more, uh, um, what would you say? Wait, is this are, real? Yeah, <laughs> wiser, wiser. So they'll fall for dark triad. Did they make a fucking Jordan Peterson explains what it means to be a black woman in America? No shot is this real. Same energy, black Republicans committee? No shot. Is that a real fucking, oh my God, we're going to watch that. We're 100% watching that. Man, and that's partly how psychopathy propagates itself across the generations. <laughs> right? They can be enticed by psychopathic personas, but she prefers the beast. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, the beast is the adventure. It's like, I like that. Okay, dude, I'm sorry, but Jordan Peterson is such a fucking lib, dude. He is literally such a fucking lib. This is exactly the same shit that rad libs do, okay? I want a story that's good and promotes good values and promotes the world in the way that I see it, which is good. And then the bad people get their comeuppance and they can't be bad. They can't be complex individuals. And that's really fucked up, okay? He's just doing that for conservatism, okay? Him decrying about, uh, you know, uh, the, the archetypical stereotypes and the way that they're built in culture now is straight up and 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 pointing to to beauty and the beast as like the peak the masterpiece because it agrees with this like worldview is straight up the exact same shit okay it's just the other side of the same fucking coin dude oh my lord well is this terrible man you know like he's he's rough he's unhewed he's he's but he's got potential right and that's what really attracts her and she wants someone who can guard the walls and make a safe haven for the children but who's generous enough to who's productive enough to be useful and generous enough to share mm -hmm. and so she civilizes him and that's you know you say well that's the female hero myth it's like the civilizing of men is the female hero myth and the civilizing of nature in some sense is the male hero myth and and, 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 and to pretend that that's like a secondary pursuit which is what the society says that that like what we should value is it in, in a certain way feminism is a, a construct of the patriarchy <laughs> because, it, because yeah, it's they're completely and it's modern guys because the notion is well the men have got it all right and all we'd have to do is for women to be more like men it's, right exactly. that's that's your aim this is my wife is engaged in a series of discussions with this jonathan pajot i mentioned earlier it's an inquiry into the symbolism of the divine feminine because we have a real question in our culture we have a more what I think feminism paired up with capitalism or white feminism in some respects does kind of uh, put out those vibes. Okay. But ultimately, it's not, you know, it's not feminism. He reads too much books. I don't understand. It's just like, Hassan agree with Jordan Peterson confirmed. I mean, this notion that feminism is is uh, taking women's femininity away. Saying that feminism is a product of the patriarchy is true. That's dialectics, okay? He's not wrong. Saying that feminism is uh, promoting male-like behavior, on the other hand, is not true. In some ways, you could look at it as, worst of all, there's many different kinds of feminism.
but uh, it, unless you're talking about like white uh, feminists or rad femmes that are pro capitalist rad femmes, you're you're completely missing the mark. What is even male like behavior? I mean, if you live in a world where if you've engaged in the world building of Jordan Peterson and the world is supposed to be dominated by men, okay, powerful men that also demonstrate uh, good virtues and are good leaders overall, okay, and that is like the divine and natural way, uh, the natural hierarchy, then yes, women also wanting to have some kind of ownership over that power is ultimately going to be women trying to be like men because he doesn't live in a fucking world outside of of men being the dominant force men being in the natural order the dominators okay that's why that's why he's like he has this kind of attitude elaborated narrative of let's say call it masculine heroism um and a more differentiated sense of masculine totalitarianism as well because it's true really you think a world needs to be dominated by men that's a natural order are you fucking stupid what an insane take. The, the female role is still somewhat undifferentiated, and I think that's partly not acceptable anymore because women have control of the reproductive function now. So a lot of this has to become conscious. It can't just happen automatically. Right. No, I, I mean, that, that, that's right. And so at a time when the virtues of femininity need to be taught more than ever, they're being taught the opposite more than ever. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, well, because I, um, somebody... you have to opt into you have to opt into this feature of humanity where before you didn't have to opt into it. It was, it was going to be forced upon you. Right. I mean, right, as long right. as you were going to engage in sexual activity, you were going to experience the, the joys of motherhood. Right. Right. And, and you were going to have to play this role. But mm -hmm. now you no longer have to, which means that you actually you have, have choice. To, you have to be taught that there's value in the role in order for you to em embrace mm -hmm. the role. Mm -hmm. And, and you, know, you have to be willing to notice that within without seeing that as only part of you in your peculiarity and not as something regressive. Somebody clipped something I said and put it on one of those YouTube shorts. It's like three minutes long. And it's got, I don't know, 8 million views. The thing I don't understand about this is like when women do embrace, for example, the way that they look, okay, or their sexuality, take matters into their own hands per se, and uh, decide that like, I want to look sexy and I want to make money by looking sexy, okay? I'm sick and tired of other dudes that are making money off of me being sexy. These dudes lose their fucking minds. How is that not also in some way, in some aspects, embracing your own femininity? Okay. They hate that shit. They absolutely hate it. It's like, no, I not like that. I meant like, you know, trad cat stuff, like wear an apron or something. Okay. Yeah, embracing your femininity and, and seeing it as a virtue is by being a housewife to a shitty husband. That's the only way. Also, where is the relationship advice? This is nine minutes and 11 seconds, and I have yet to hear a fucking crumb of relationship advice, let alone the best relationship advice I will ever hear. They haven't said shit, dude. Is there something, and they called it advice to 19 year old women. And so what I said in this uh, brief video was that Jordan Peterson gives the best relationship advice. Feminism is all about men <laughs> and women being like men. Oh, fuck yeah, dude. If anything, if I'm an incel and I watch this, I click, I watch this, I go, wow, he's really reinforcing my fucking deluded worldview. Thank you, Jordan Peterson. This is great advice. Drowning in pussy now. Okay, okay. So we'll, we'll go for another minute. Was that... I've watched, I've worked with women as peers my whole life. So I was part of the first generation, I would say, and certainly in my profession in psychology. What the fuck just That's happened? partly not acceptable anymore because women have control of the reproductive function now. So a lot of this has to become conscious. It can't just happen automatically. Right. No, I, I mean, that, that's right. And so Wait, I'm sorry. What? Now role is still different of, let's say, call it masculine heroism. Um, and a more differentiated sense of masculine totalitarianism as well. The, the female role is still somewhat undifferentiated. And I think that's 
partly not acceptable anymore because women have control of the reproductive function now. So a lot of this has to become conscious. It can't just happen automatically. Right. No, I, I mean, that, that, that's right. And so at a time when the virtues of femininity... I did rewind it on purpose because I was trying to understand if he was literally talking about how women are more in control over their own lives and that's a negative thing because they have more control over their own reproductive functions. Very uh, strange take. I more than went ever, the video back. The opposite more than ever. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, well, I... Um, you, have to opt into, you have to opt into this feature of humanity where before you didn't have to opt into it. It was, it was going to be forced upon you, right? I mean, right, as long right. as you were going to engage in sexual activity, you were going to experience the, the joys of motherhood. Right, right. And, and you were going to have to play this role. But mm -hmm. now you no longer have to, which means that you actually you have, have, choice. To, you have to be taught that there's value in the role in order for you to em mm -hmm. embrace the role. Mm -hmm. And, and you, know, you have to be willing to... For the record, this is uh, a Jordan Peterism, the whole, like, Women getting reproductive freedom has actually been a major burden on civilized society. We do not know how women act in the workplace. We still don't know. Like, I've heard him say that a million fucking times over about how, like, birth control, the birth control pill, has literally, like, changed women in a dynamic way, made them a lot like men uh, and all this other shit. And that that has allowed more women to enter the workforce, enter the workplace. And that uh, is, is, you know, a, a, a potentially dangerous experiment. To notice that within without seeing that as on. only part of you in your peculiarity and not as something regressive. Somebody clipped something I said and put it on one of those YouTube shorts. It's like three minutes long. And I just got, I don't know, 8 million views or something. And it's, they called it advice to 19 year old women. And so what I said in this uh, brief video was that, okay, okay, so we'll, we'll go for another minute, was that I've watched, I've worked with women as peers my whole life. So I was part of the first generation, I would say, and certainly in my profession in psychology, there's been a plethora of women certainly since before I entered the field. So I've worked with women as peers my entire life. And I worked, even before that, I worked in, in the daycare branch of, of Alberta Social Services and mm -hmm. as a consultant, and that was mostly women too. So, and what, what I noticed about women, and this I really was struck home to me when I worked with high-end lawyers in Toronto, because I worked with the best law firms in Toronto for 10 years. Wait, are they getting kicked out when the guy comes over? I thought that was, was like... That, Okay, okay, so we'll, we'll go for another minute. Was oh my God. I said in this uh, brief oh my God. video was that... Okay. Okay, okay, so we'll, we'll go for another minute. Was that <laughs> I've watched, I've worked with women as peers my whole life. So I was part of the first generation, I would say, and certainly in my profession in psychology, there's been a plethora of women certainly since before I entered the field. So I've worked with women as peers my entire life. And I worked, even before that, I worked in, in the daycare branch of, of Alberta Social Services. And Where are they that no one's wearing a mask, by the way? This is kind of weird. This is like a new video, right? I guess Texas? Like no one is fucking wearing a mask at all. It's a set. As a consultant, and that was mostly women too. So, and what, what I noticed about women and this I really was struck home to me when I worked with high-end lawyers in Toronto because I worked with the best law firms in Toronto for 10 years with their best lawyers. They would send them to me and some other people that were involved in this enterprise and our deal was, we'll increase the efficiency of your high-end lawyers by 10% in terms of billable hours, but we work for them, mm -hmm. not you. And so then I had about 15 of lawyers like this come and see me. They were skeptical to begin with, but we got over that pretty quick. And some of it was, it was management discussion. Some of it was strategy. Some of it was sorting out their marriage. Who stalls more, you think? Me or Jordan Peterson? Like, at least, like, I go through 700 fucking different takes in an hour because I have, like, ADHD and I'm jumping from, uh, you know, one thing to the other. Whereas I feel as though JP can't even fucking finish one, one statement. He just has like the most insane 
convoluted points. Marriage, work-life balance, like it really depended on the individual as it should in the therapeutic session. But we had a lot of discussions with the women because the lawyer, the law firms lost all their women in their early 30s. Mm -hmm. And the story was always the same. So these women who became these top, top lawyers, they all had the same story. They're hyper conscientious and very, very smart. Mm -hmm. So they were top of junior high, top of high school, top of their class in college, went to a great law school, top law school class, mm -hmm. they went to a great law firm, and then they walked through the legal ranks till they hit the senior partner. No, like blinders on, right. like conscientious mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. will have. Mm -hmm. I'm going to attain up this pyramid. Then they'd hit 30 or so when, when they hit ten, you know, senior partner, equivalent of tenured professor. And then they woke up and thought, what the hell am I doing here? I'm working like 80 hours a week, 75 hours a week, flat out. Because you don't get to that level unless right. you're like, we're performing. Bro, this is, okay, here's the thing. I can't believe this was the point. Jesus fucking Christ. This was literally the fucking point and I'm losing my mind, okay? Dude, what you're talking about, what you're describing is literally just burnout that happens to both men and women under capitalism. It doesn't actually... Oh my God, his face is so funny. I can't... I'm losing it. He's literally pogging. Pog! Poggers! I'm pogging every time I think of a woman leaving the workplace to go back to her traditional roots. Okay. <laughs> this is so stupid. He literally is saying that like women experience burnout and then leave the workforce and that burnout is caused by their desire to have children and become a traditional wife. And it's like, so why the fuck do men have burnout? Burnout in academia got nothing to do with capitalism, to be honest, but he's not just talking about academia. So why the fuck do men experience burnout then? Because they want to go home and become trad dads? Is that what it is? Is that why? Or, or it's because they're fucking forcibly feminized by microplastics and also watching pornography. And you get a call at two in the morning from some client in China who's got a corporate merger. It's like, you're awake and on it. Right. And you put that on top of everything or you don't get paid $750 an hour. And you say, well, that's the patriarchy. It's like, no, it's not. It's the market. That was it.